Welcome back. It was about a month ago uh, that uh, Sam Webb joined us, for, uh, Insider Covers Michigan. And he did something which really irritated me and pretty much everyone. He picked Michigan to beat Alabama, so I immediately told our producers, never let this guy back on the airways again. <laughs> Sam, great to see you. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was hard to believe a month ago today we were all uh, out there in, in Pasadena watching Michigan beat Alabama and, according to some, ending Nick Saban's career. Uh, how are you doing? A lot's happened since then. Yeah, a whole lot has happened since then. Uh, Michigan obviously won the national championship, and you saw some coaches really rise to the fore, especially in that game. I mean, Jesse Minter, it was a vir virtuoso performance by him. And I think uh, the nation really saw what Michigan had been seeing for two years. That guy is really worth his salt. And that's why Jim Harbaugh is taking him with him out to, uh, out to the Chargers. So let's, let's talk about, I mean, everyone suspected Harbaugh was going to leave. I don't think that uh, took a lot of imagination. But, but uh, the decision to uh, elevate Sharon Moore also fairly easy uh how is it playing in Ar ann arbor uh yeah it, it everyone is pretty much on the same page you know rarely uh do you have uh, a fan base an alumni base leadership coaches players kind of thinking in unison that what well, jim harbaugh built here is special i mean you know the the culture that he was able to cultivate uh, a culture that wasn't bad before it's not like his culture was bad before 2020 but you had a guy who had some deep introspection when it was very clear that his job was in jeopardy in 2020. You got to change some things. Yeah, you had some success, but not the ultimate success. So what are you going to do to get there? And part of that was being very, very conscious of the, the changes he needs to make. He needs to make culturally. That means getting in new coaches, getting in some younger coaches, you know, kind of valuing the input of your players more. All of those things play into it. And Sharon was one of the guys that was a holdover. I mean, he broomed a lot of staff members, and he kept Sharon Moore. Not only did he keep Sharon Moore, Paul, I mean, you had a very popular coach and a very well-established coach and Ed Warner coaching the offensive line at that time. And you had a lot of Michigan fans scratching their heads as to why would Jim Harbaugh tap a tight ends coach who's never coached offensive line to coach it at a time where his job is really on the line. And you could really see over these last couple of years, why he really connects with his players. He really knows ball. He really doesn't let the adversity of the moment get to him. All of these ingredients kind of add up to a guy who, even though he's 37, is really ready for the magnitude of this moment. And, and he seems like he is. And, and I, I don't know, but in hearing people talk, it seems like uh, there will be a grace period because the schedule next year is absurd. The team looks good, maybe not as elite. And when I, when I talk about the schedule, second game of the season against Texas and then at Southern Cal and at Washington, that's only in the first half. The second half has Oregon at home and, and then the usual uh, ending at Ohio State. Uh, you heard, you may have heard uh, John Bacon mention eight and four. Uh, are, are we talking about a transitional year here for Sharon Moore? Or do you think uh, this team is capable of, of, of making another, at least a playoff run? Depends, Paul. I mean, who can he keep? And, you know, if he can keep this team intact, they're loaded on defense. You got two first-round defensive tackles in Mason Graham and Kim Grant. Uh, you have your your two the the two guys who who were leaving for the draft uh, that graduated on the edge were really really good. But I think you could make the case that the guys replacing them behind them are even more talented. Uh, you bring in the number one linebacker from the transfer portal last year, Ernest Hausman. He's in his second year now, so he has his transition behind him. And then they get the kid, Jayshon Barham from Maryland, who I think is elite. I think he's an elite linebacker prospect. And then everyone is back in the secondary for the most part. All-American corner, Will Johnson. You have both your safeties back in Rod Moore and Makari Page. And then Keon Sabs coming on, so you're able to slide one of those guys in for Mikey St. Ristol, who was a big-time playmaker for them. You have all the ingredients to have a championship-level defense. you got to find some things offensively. But again, what do they return? And a large part of that, a large part of answering that question anyway, is what staff members can he keep? And I'm sure you've noted he's been in kind of a tussle with Jim Harbaugh for certain, for certain guys. And so far, Jim Harbaugh is winning the tug-of-war uh, as they, they tug back and forth for some of these, for some of these coaches. Let's talk about another issue. Uh, forget biting Harbaugh, but 
Since Ryan Day was left dead uh, on the field a couple of months ago uh, and then lost to Missouri, he's done something quite extraordinary. Uh, he's just gone, and I don't know where he's and how he's doing it. I'm sure Michigan fans have their own theory. But how, how, what is the Michigan view of what Ryan Day has done in the portal? You don't know how he's doing it. Come on, Paul. Come on, Paul. <laughs> I, was, I was born at night. Not last night. The, the portal, the portal is a thing. The portal is its own thing. And here's what I sense. Look, I think the resources that Ryan Day has at his disposal were at one level up to this point. Because uh, it's not a secret to Michigan fans. Ohio State fans were complaining about the portal as much as Michigan people were. Uh, how are we not getting portal guys? And look, they they were supposed to get this guy, and he's going someplace else. Now all of a sudden, Ohio State's not complaining about the portal anymore. Seems kind of odd and conspicuous, right? What it says to me is they've gotten drilled on the field the last three years. Every excuse has been removed. You know, you look back in in twenty one, it was it was one bad half, right? Or, or and then you look back at twenty two, it was five bad plays. This year, they tried to make it about the signs, but obviously the signs weren't being stolen at that point. So let's remove all the excuses. All that, Jim Harbaugh is gone now. Every player you want in the portal, you can have. So if you lose this year, guess what you can't do? You can't make any excuses. You aren't facing Harbaugh. You aren't facing Jesse Minter. You got every player you want in the portal. They don't have a quarter. They're, they're, they're not returning a quarterback this time around. Seems like all, and you're at home, all of the chips are in Ohio State's favor. So you should win right now if you're Ryan Day. And if you don't, well, we know what that means. You know, I, I, Sam, I, I, I'm, I'm not uh, a virgin when it comes to college football, but I, I just am a little bit shocked by what you said. First of all, you got Judkins, who a year, and a year ago was the best running back in the SEC. He decides that he wants to go from Ole Miss. Then you have Sayan, who's the number one quarterback. Uh, and then who's the guy from Alabama, the defensive guy? Oh, Caleb Downs. Down. I don't think you understand how three Southern guys, uh, two living in Tuscaloosa and one living in Oxford, wouldn't rather spend the winter in Columbus, Ohio. I really don't I think you're being naive to, to think that something nefarious is going on here. I didn't say, I didn't say nefarious. I didn't say Ohio State was being nefarious. There, there's just a way that things are done now. Uh, you know, we don't have to be naive about it. I think everyone is, is privy to it. I'm not saying anyone is breaking any rules. I'm saying there is a way that things are done in okay. this day and age of college football. And, you know, some teams were slower to play the game. And that's not an excuse for Ryan Day. That's not an excuse for Ryan Day. He has everything at his disposal to go out and not just beat Michigan, but win a national championship. And if you can't get it, you've already changed all your staff. You changed everyone. You got a new defensive staff from a couple of years ago, right? You got a new offensive coordinator. You went and got Bill O'Brien, who I'm sure Jalen Milrow is like, that's a great hire, right? So <laughs> a lot so, of people think a lot of a lot of our fans think it was a great hire, too. So you got all these things. You turn it over play calling. Because there were a lot of Ohio State fans kind of criticized. Take your hands off the wheel, Ryan. Well, now all of those things are different. Go win. And don't just beat Michigan. Win a championship, just like Jim Harbaugh did. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know where we find some of these guests, uh, guys. But, uh, hey, all kidding aside, Sam, uh, a lot of people in Columbus are, are, are pointing toward Ann Arbor because that third loss and Michigan winning the title, some, so, somehow, some way, that red light went off in that uh, Columbus uh, bang, didn't it? It did. I think it, uh, you know, John Bacon made a great point. You know, your rival, your rival winning has a way of triggering something in you. Like it was, it, it was bad the last couple of years, but it's worse. The loss this year was worse because Michigan went and won the whole damn thing. So you got to do something. This will not stand in Columbus. That, I mean, you got to, you have a generation of Buckeyes who grew up not knowing what it was to lose to Michigan. And now to see not Michigan didn't just win. They won it all. No, 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 no. Let's let's go fix this. If you're if you're Ryan Day and his staff and the athletic administration there, so and you you're catching Michigan at a time where, like I said, you know you just lost. If you're Michigan, you just lost the strength coach. This is a a major major 
loss for for Michigan. Jim Harbaugh came in and took him, and by all accounts that I've heard, he's going to make him – he's blowing away the pay scale for strength coaches in the NFL because they don't even play the same role, Paul, in the NFL that they do in college. So that tells you how much Jim Harbaugh values Ben Herbert. It also tells you what kind of bank he's working with. If he could come in and Big Bank takes Little Bank Michigan like he just did when he was making a million dollars on a five-year contract at Michigan. So imagine what he must be paying him in L.A. to get him to come out there. That is the kind of thing when you lose a guy like that, you lose Jim Harbaugh, and you lose Jesse Minter, who my guy Vance Bedford, I trust him implicitly, his football opinion. He said Jesse Minter was out front of college football. He was even out front of Nick Saban as a defensive schemer in this last cycle. That means a lot to me. So you're getting rid of all of that. And, and now you're facing Michigan with the with the replacement coach. Uh, you have no excuse if you're Ohio State not to win this game. You know, Sam, as we close, I, I, I'll, I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm a slow believer, but if I look down one day and read that Ryan Day has put this individual in his analyst room, then I know we're going to be in trouble. And if he hires Jimbo Fisher as an analyst, then forget it. Uh, Michigan better go, uh, get, better go hide. Sam, this was fun. It uh, really is great to see you again and uh, enjoy the winter in Ann Arbor. Hey, Paul, you're welcome to come up here anytime, man. I, we, let's see. Sam, I keep, I keep looking for an invitation. Uh, we had Roy Wood on the other day, uh, the comedian, uh, right before the, the Rose Bowl, and he, he actually played Ann Arbor the other night, and I, I jokingly said, I'll, if somebody invites me, I'll come up there and do a stand-up routine, but I can't, I don't, I, no invitations from Ann Arbor. I mean, I'm, I'm cheap. I'm not Roy Wood. I mean, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm Paul, not a well, comedy. You, you, you won some fans when you said, hey, you know what? The way Michigan won, and they went through the last five weeks of the season, and they beat all comers, they're the legitimate national champion. Do you know you actually won over some, not as fans, but they, they aren't ready to tire and feather you anymore? I, yeah, I was ready to end that. And by, and by the way, I jokingly said to somebody the other day on a podcast, they said, why did you do that? It was, it was on in Columbus uh, with Tim May. I said I was sleep deprived. You know, I flew back after the game. I, I was kidding, uh, of course. Because, I mean, I was ready for that. I mean, I, 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 I did fly back all night knowing I'm going to be on the, the morning shows on ESPN. And I had thought about that during the five-hour flight with, uh, as I was chowing down my pretzels uh, and, 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 and warm, cold water. Uh, but I, I thought it was time to end it. And, and by the way, I was impressed. I mean, at the Rose Bowl, I, I walked away in amazement at what I saw. And I, I was not surprised at all when the same thing happened seven days later. Yeah, it was it was a tremendous performance, a physically dominating performance, especially in the national championship. In both games, frankly, they they won at the line of scrimmage in both games. And, you know, you watch these teams, even, even in the NFL, I think there's a return to the throwback nature of football where physicality in the trenches and punching people in the mouth can win championships. We just saw it in college football, and we'll see uh, what wins the day and pro football here in uh, in a couple weeks. And I didn't mention it because I mentioned three of the top uh, guys in the portal, but I I'm sure some of the Michigan defensive linemen were extremely happy to see that Tyler McLaughlin, the center from Alabama, is also going to be in Columbus. <laughs> Poor kid, man. We picked that out before the game. Paul, oh, my guys, uh, yeah, shout out. You've had Al Borges on this show, a uh, longtime offensive coordinator, Vance Bedford. We did a preview, and they said, man, I don't know what Washington's going to do. Uh, they got a problem on the interior line because this kid is about to get destroyed, and he did. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and, and look, he's a young guy, and he's going to get a lot better, and he was facing two NFL first-round draft picks. But here's the problem. He's going to be facing first-round draft picks all the time in the SEC, so I'm, I'm actually rooting for the young fella. I got some friends on that Alabama staff. Shout-out to my guy, Courtney Morgan, who I went to Michigan with. He's a tremendous GM for Kalen DeBoer. And so they're going to get guys and they're going to get talent. But that young fella, I think what happened to him against Michigan was really good training for what he's going to see in the SEC on a weekly basis. Hey, great to see you. Sam Webb joining us as uh, we uh, appreciate it very much. Sam, we'll stay in touch. It was always it was fun to catch up with you these last couple of weeks as Michigan is the national ch champion. We'll take a short break. We'll, we're back right after this.